In 1981, BBC aired a sketch show called A Kick Up The 80s. Despite having a few people in it who would go on to receive wide recognition, it is probably best remembered as being many people's introduction to Rick Mail. Despite being asked to be one of the actors appearing in the sketches, Mail, in his words, wants to do a character on the telly who would just waste television time and be incompetent. The result was Kevin Turvey. Today, I'm going to investigate, I, I mean review, both Kevin Turvey investigates, i.e. all 11 sketches from a kick up the 80s, and the character's 1982 special, Kevin Turvey, Behind the Green Door. Kevin Turvey was a dim-witted independent investigative reporter from the Midlands, in a blue anorak and patterned shirts with very 70s collars. We'd often start off talking to camera about whatever the BBC had asked him to investigate that week, before immediately going on tangents about almost everything else under the sun, recounting tedious moments of his life in absurd levels of detail. I'll invite Teresa Kelly over to supper and have sex with her afterwards. <laughs> really, because I've got all the things at home. I've got sausages and uh, potatoes, gravy, furniture. <laughs> uh, loads, I've got loads of things at home. I mean, windows and all sorts of things. But it was just the food that I was thinking about at the time, right? I feel like we've all met someone like Kevin who never gets to the point and isn't half as interesting. That or we're all scared we are, Kevin. I have seen comically boring characters like this fail before, but Rick Mail can pull it off with a combination of the bizarre nature of the character's ramblings and his engaging performance. He wrote these monologues with producer Colin Gilbert, but Mail wants to keep the character's existence ambiguous, so Kevin was credited as himself. Mail credited the success of the character to the fact that half the audience thought that he really existed. Do they, people expect you to go straight into the character the minute they meet you? No, they, I think a lot of people think you actually are like that. It was even worse with Kevin Turvey. And people used to expect you to talk like this all the time, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were really disappointed when Kevin wasn't real. However, I think that the sketches still work now that Mail is a familiar face. It may seem weird for me to be reviewing just the Kevin Turvey sketches from a sketch show, but they were released on VHS like that by the BBC. I'd be happy to watch more of the show if you guys are interested, so let me know in the comments below. I mean, a sketch show starring Robbie Coltrane and Miriam Margulies? I'm already sold. It has been uploaded to YouTube, and if you are a VHS collector, you can buy the Kevin Turvey Investigates VHS from the Rick Mail scrapbook. Anyway, could such a basic sketch concept of a character talking to camera work as a 45 minute special? Turvey Behind the Green Door is a special that originally aired on BBC in 1982, a few months before Mail's stand-up character got his own sitcom. It's a mockumentary that follows Kevin around whilst he tries to investigate corruption in his local park. Much like his monologues, he ends up encountering someone irrationally violent and then goes on a tangent, and we end up seeing him go about his day, catching the bus and going to the supermarket. The park keeper is played by Roger Sloman, who went on to appear in male sitcoms The Young Ones as the TV detector, and bottom as Eddie and Richie's landlord, Mr Harrison. Kevin lives with his mother and their lodger Mick, played by Robbie Coltrane, who would go on to feature in the next series of Kick Up the 80s, as well as several episodes of Comic Strip Presents. We also get to see his frenemy Keith Marshall, played by male's comedy partner Adrian Edmondson. This friend of mine, right, Keith Marshall, well, he would be my friend, like, if I liked him, yeah. He has his own musical number, which feels exactly like someone wrote a punk song but couldn't afford an electric guitar or find someone to join the band with him. I'm a fag, a real fag, why don't you listen to me? Keith Marshall and his musical anarchy, Keith Marshall and his musical anarchy. I don't know how Adrian Edmondson can write these comically bad songs that stay in my head for the rest of the day. Anarchy, Keith Marshall and his musical anarchy, yeah. Saxophone break. Ba 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 However, we never get to see Kevin's crush, Teresa Kelly, as he yet again fails to be able to take her on a date. There's a bit where we hear a conversation between Kevin, Mick and Keith, and it's like a conversation between three Kevins. I know you must be thinking that must sound quite boring, but no, it's somehow still really funny. Uh, it's the French that eat the frogs. Well, you know, they eat their legs. 
could have made the rest of them. They probably like keep the frogs in little homes and teach them to walk about on their hands. Because they can't make wheelchairs that small. I bet the Japanese could. Yeah, but the Japanese don't eat frogs, do they? Now, I'll tell you what they do. They probably make the frogs little tin legs, right? With springs inside them. So as they can bounce about the place and never ever notice that half of them has been eaten. What a load of bollocks. They'd notice at bedtime, wouldn't they? No. Not if they was on Valium, no. No, it wouldn't work. No, what they do is they give all the attendants little catapults. And they could flick the frogs about everywhere, you know, ponds and trees and things, without them having to make any effort, right? So, if one of the frogs should realise he hasn't got any legs, they could just flick it over a wall or something before he let the others know. The special is a lovely little oddity, showing us the world through Kevin's eyes. He did remind me of Philomena Kunk a bit at times. As you can see, all over the place there's food. Why is that? Well, because if it wasn't here, then for most of these people, coming to the supermarket would be a completely wasted journey. Foods from all over the world gather at Tesco's. It's, it's a Eurovision song contest of food. But, you know, w without all of the unpleasantness. Of course, I do recommend it if you're a fan of Rick Mail or any of the other so-called alternative comedy slash comic strip lot. I also recommend it if you like mockumentaries in general. It's not Mail's best work, but that certainly doesn't make it bad. If anything, it shows how talented he was so early on in his career. Again, this only had a VHS release, but it has been uploaded to YouTube. If you want to watch me review another comedy TV movie, you can watch my review of Blue Money starring Tim Curry here. See you soon! Don't look at me. I'm irrelevant. <laughs>